Hello and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. Over the winter season of 2022 and 23, I've been working pretty hard on my Fun of Flying channel and have posted at least 15 new videos on YouTube during that period, which hopefully the flight sim community in general has found both interesting and useful. However, it's now spring here in the UK and for us that means a well-earned and extended break on board our lovely boat which is permanently moored about a hundred miles away from where we live in a national park area of the east of England called the Broads. Unfortunately however that means that I won't have access to any of my home editing equipment and therefore will sadly not be in a position to post any more new videos for quite a while. For that very reason, in the few days that I have left at home, I decided to quickly post one last video before we go, and in the video I'll be going through the relatively straightforward process of using momentary push buttons in conjunction with the Explain Direct plugin. Obviously you could use such push buttons for all sorts of controls in Explain, and you could use as many as you wish, but for the purposes of this particular video, I've simply assigned six of them to some virtual push buttons relating to the Garmin G530 flight management computer in a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. So this is my little temporary setup that I'm using, which includes a small push button box that I made some time ago, something that you may recognize from a previous video. Once again, I've tried to take a number of photos from different angles, just to give you a clearer understanding of how things are laid out. Okay, so in a little bit more detail, and please forgive the um, pretty unprofessional looking setup here. Uh, I had to do something very quickly as I knew that I was shortly going to go away on vacation. But we have uh, the little uh, bespoke uh, six push button box here. Um, we have the uh, microcontroller, the Mega 2560 over here at the center of everything. And then I'm just using the uh, distribution board that I made up to collect all of the ground returns from the push buttons here. Um, obviously on the uh, Mega 2560 there is only a couple of ground terminals I think and not enough clearly to accommodate six uh, cables or wires coming from the push button. So that's why we use this distribution board. So that collects all the six ground returns here and then courtesy of just one ground return wire going back to the uh, microcontroller. On the other side of all the push buttons, of course, we have our signal wires. And uh, for this particular project, I'm taking them back to pin terminal number 22, 26, 30, 34, 38 and 42. Um, if you want to do something like this then you can use any of these uh, pin terminals here it doesn't matter which as long as the sketch code that uh, is written for it um, actually marries up with those pin numbers that you're using physically okay so that's about it uh, I said it was going to be simple um, but if you have any questions then please let me know and I'll try my best to answer them Just before we leave this though, here's the uh, theoretical um, version of what I just showed you. Um, and it might make things a bit clearer if you're not entirely sure. So we have the uh, Mega 2560 here of course, we have our six push buttons. And uh, the, this is a representation of my ground uh, distribution board. So we have from each side of the uh, push buttons, we have our signal wires up here going to pin terminals. Uh, 22, 26, 30, 34, 38 and 42 and as I said before you can use any of these pins you like um, but just make sure that the sketch code reflects that um, when it's written and on the other side of each of the uh, push buttons we have our ground return which goes uh, through this distribution board um, as a collection point and then one sig single uh, ground return wire going back to the microcontroller itself. Um, the only other point worth mentioning here is the fact that I'm not using any physical resistors in this circuit whatsoever as I've declared the onboard pull up resistor uh, in the actual sketch code. Okay so hopefully that makes things a little bit clearer. 
Okay, so I've now popped over to the Arduino IDE software and we'll have a look at the sketch code that I've written for this particular project. A couple of bits of blurb as always. Um, this sketch will only work with the uh, Mega 2560, or at least that's the only board I can get it to work with. And I think Michael, the developer at Curiosity Workshop, is looking at to why it doesn't seem to work with the Uno or even the uh, Leonardo. But the Mega 2560 is probably the best one anyway because it's got a huge memory capacity and it's not going to get troubled by any large pieces of code. Um, the other point worth mentioning here is because we're using the X-Plane plugin which is specifically designed for X-Plane then clearly this sketch code won't work with anything like Microsoft 2020 or um, any other flight simulator. Let me come down to the uh, rest of the setup section here, or the beginning of the setup section, and we need two libraries, the Arduino.h library, which is available in the IDE software itself, and then, of course, the Explain Direct um, library here, which can be downloaded free from Curiosity Workshop website. Uh, it can be downloaded free, but please, uh, if you're going to download it, then please uh, try and try and recognise the work that Michael, the developer, has done, and um, buy him a cup of coffee, or at least sign up for his Patreon page. Then we uh, initiate the plugin, ready for use later in the code. This section here is uh, simply setting up the pin terminal numbers on the microcontroller for the various signal wires connected to the physical push buttons and as you know we're using pin numbers 22, 26, 30, 34, 38 and 42. Then we go on to the uh, void setup section and we take uh, what we've done there a little bit further by declaring those pin numbers uh, as inputs and we're also availing ourselves of the onboard uh, pull-up resistor on the microcontroller so that we don't have to use any physical resistors in the wiring. All of this here, uh, don't worry about it too much. Uh, this is just for the uh, uh, functioning or, or correct functioning of the x plugin itself. If you're going to write any code or get involved with any code that has the uh, uh, x plane uh, plug-in in mind um, then please make sure that if you uh, put there if you write this into the code make sure you write it correctly otherwise uh, things may not work out as you expect um, the last bit of the void setup section is this and basically what we're doing here is registering various commands uh, with explain so that we can activate them later on in the sketch code and in this case we're um, registering the commands for six buttons on the Garmin G530 flight management uh, module uh, which is the CDI button, the OBS button, the message button, flight plan button, VNAV and procedures buttons and that's really it and then we come down to the void loop section and all we're really writing into this is this bit here it's pretty straightforward and um, we are uh, monitoring the voltage at these uh, pin terminals here um, which uh, the voltage of which will change from low to high if you if one of the push buttons is physically pressed so if it if uh, a high voltage is detected at any of these then uh, courtesy of this bit of code here it activates these commands in X-Plane. Uh, and then all of this down here is uh, for the correct functioning of the plugin again. And uh, I just thought I'd point this out. Um, these commands here, you can get them from two sources. Um, one is the um, text file in X-Plane itself, which I think you'll find under resources slash plugins. There's also another text file for data refs. Um, but another useful tool is this one here, Data Ref Editor tool, and you can have this functioning whilst X-Plane is open, and when you press a button or flick a switch, then you should be able to see which command or data ref uh, is being altered, and that's where I basically got these from here. And then once I've copied them into here, I put them into my bit of code up there. 
Okay, so that's it. Uh, again, any questions, please let me know. Right, so proof of the pudding is in the eating, so to speak. So we've now, I've now opened a, a session of X-Plane and I've loaded the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. And we're just uh, focusing, focusing on the uh, Garmin G530 flight management module here. And these are the six buttons that I've uh, programmed my external buttons to operate. So we've got CDI, ABS, message, flight plan, PNAV and procedures here. So I move my cursor right out of the way and courtesy of the video inlay that you should be looking at, um, I'm going to press each of these buttons in turn and you should see some action on the screen. So if I press the CDI button first, yep, it's going from VLOCK to GPS. I don't know if you can see that, it's there. Do it again, like so. Um, the next one is the OBS button here. Just about making out. Here we are. So on and off. The next one will be the message uh, button. No messages. That's good. I've recently updated my uh, Jepson flight uh, charts and everything else and all the data, so there shouldn't be anything there. So we've got that going on and off. Then we go to the flight plan button like so I haven't actually got a flight plan in there but you get the get the idea and off again then we go to the uh, vertical navigation button here like so and off and lastly we have the procedures button La. good that all seems to work does anybody else get this message up here I don't know, it only happens in this particular aircraft. The uh, directional gyro is not lined up with the compass. I digress. Anyway, so just press these a few more times. GPS, VLOC, OBS, message, flight plan, VNAV, and procedures. And as I said right at the beginning of the video, um, I'm only demonstrating six buttons here, but you can have as many buttons as you want uh, in your own particular setups. Um, and you can uh, use the X-Plane Direct plugin to operate more or less any function in the cockpit. Um, that's what makes that particular plugin so valuable. Um, don't, no need for hid devices and uh, no need for keyboard assignments so it's all good stuff okay so that's the end of yet another project and i really hope you found it of some interest if you did then please don't forget to smash the like button and even consider subscribing so as not to miss anything in future and as i think i've said already if you have any questions then please let me know and i'll try to assist you where i can I would also like to take this opportunity to thank you once again for your continued support of my channel and if there's anything of a specific nature that you would like me to cover in future videos then message me and I'll look further into it for you. Lastly just be aware that whilst we're on board our boat over the coming months internet access for us on the river system is very limited so if you do try to contact me then i apologize now if there's a slight delay in me getting back to you thanks again and tada for now